Hello, today I'm reviewing the simple t-shirt in the Great British Sewing Bee book, Sew Your Own Wardrobe. As always, if you like this video and would like to see more, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. So to start off with the details of this pattern, so it's called the simple t-shirt in this book, and as I mentioned, it's the Sew Your Own Wardrobe book, so at this point I think there's several Great British Sewing Bee books. I've got a few of them, but not all of them. And I think this might be one of the earlier on ones, maybe the second or third, not entirely sure. Um, so I made the size 14 and there aren't any variations on this pattern. So if you look at the book, it doesn't give you any hacks or other ways to do it. So I've just done it exactly as they've said. The fabric I've used is a polyester crepe. So the main reason that I created this Top is because it was leftover fabric. Previously I'd made a dress, I feel like it's a Sew House 7 pattern, but anyway I've made a red dress in this fabric and I had just enough to make this pattern so I thought I'd give it a go. However, I would not recommend using this fabric for this pattern. So if you look at the book it suggests using a thin drapey fabric, possibly a, a silk blend or anyway something like crepe de chine. The problem with this is it's quite a thick polyester crepe and although it drapes nicely so it's not a complete disaster it is quite thick and I ran into a number of issues because of that. Saying that, moving on to the difficulty of it, it's quite a simple make but the hardest part of it is the fabric because you've got to choose a fabric which drapes well. And as I mentioned I didn't choose the best one, I still have the challenges. <laughs> of the ideal fabric so um, it's it was quite slippery so you've got to be really careful when you're cutting it out but in terms of the pieces you need to cut out you only have a front piece and the back piece so it's not too much cutting out you do need to make your own bias binding so on the bottom for the hem on the sleeves and on the neckline it's all bias binding and it shows you how to create that from your fabric. So the book's quite good in terms of instructions, but as I mentioned, because it was quite a thick polyester crepe, it then meant it really bulked up here. And that's why if you look, if you see this top closer, you can see that there's a bit of a rippled effect where I've really had to wrestle with the fabric to get it to lay flat-ish. But yeah, so it's not perfect. So it's quite simple in some ways because there aren't many seams to sew up. So you've got the two shoulder seams and you've got the side seams and it's effectively grow on sleeves. However, there are quite a lot of curves to contend with. Again, you've got that slippery fabric and then you've got to attach a whole lot of bias binding on curves. So it's got a high low hem. So there's quite a bit you need to work with. So it's a, it's a bit of a deceptive pattern in terms of difficulty. In terms of clarity I found the instructions pretty clear. It has a separate section to give you a masterclass on working with bias binding, how to create your own, how you can finish off both the visible and concealed method. So it does show you all of that. It doesn't go into a huge amount of detail on how you can finish it off nicely at the start and end, which I guess may have helped but obviously there are lots of useful tutorials online as well which you can look at to help you out. Um, but yeah that's my main criticism I guess is that they could have possibly added a bit more detail on there. But apart from that as I mentioned there's not a huge amount of construction minus the bias binding so um, there weren't too many instructions but the illustrations looked pretty clear. In terms of design and fit if I put aside the fact that I chose the wrong fabric for this particular project I really like the design of this top, so I quite like the neckline, it fits quite comfortably. I'm a fan of grow-on sleeves and it's obviously a lot easier to make because I didn't need to stitch on separate sleeves. Although obviously if you do have separate sleeves sometimes you can fit it slightly better to yourself. And I think if you had the right fabric it wouldn't look as bulky at the sides, it would drape a lot better. I really like the high-low hem and it's quite nicely curved and it's quite a good one that I can use both at home for casual wear so I can wear it with jeggings like I do now but I could also wear it if I needed to take it to work or I could 
if I needed to look smart somewhere, I can just dress it up or down appropriately. The time taken, I think for a confident sewist, you could easily do this in a day. Um, because I went horrendously wrong, <laughs> I had to unpick the bias binding and then reattach it as best as I could. So it did take me a couple of days to then rectify it. But it definitely is one that if you're quite confident and happy with bias binding, you could just get on with it and make it easily in a day. So to conclude, um, I really like the design of this top. I'd quite like to make it again in another fabric, a thinner fabric, one that still drapes nicely but won't come across the same issues that I did previously. Even with this top to be honest, I think maybe if I just bought some thin silk bias binding rather than creating some from the actual fabric it might have settled a bit better. Um, but it's just one of those things and to be honest I made this a while ago and I have worn it tons even though it has a really bobbly neckline so it hasn't put me off which makes me think that it probably is worth making another one and that one will hopefully be even better. So that's it for this time, thanks for watching. <laughs>